him. I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Come on, everybody. It is time for the only news that matters on Black Sabbath Sunday. And George Lynch recalled the miserable experience of being hired by Ozzy Osbourne and torn for a month without going on stage before finally being replaced by Jakey Lee. Lynch's 1982 experience came three years after he first auditioned for Osbourne when the Prince of Darkness chose Randy Rhodes. On the second occasion, he was hoping to fill Brad Gillis' shoes, and he nearly did. He said, I was kind of feeling like, okay, well, this time's real. This time, it's going to stick, Lynch told Ultimate Guitar in a recent interview. And I had time to prepare. Lynch enlisted Rats Warren D. Martini to help him out with Rhodes guitar parts. Admitting the style was not really down my lane, but by the time of his new audition, he was confident he knew the material and it seemed to go well. And they flew me around. I was in Scotland, I was in Ireland, England, back to Texas for rehearsals. Did some touring, but I didn't walk on stage during the show. I'd do the sound checks with him occasionally and stuff like that and just hung out with the band i think they wanted to see how i fit chemistry wise with everyone but they had two problems with me ozzy had a problem with my short hair i had short hair at the time and then his wife had a problem with my green guitar she said it looked like a booger <laughs> Didn't care what it sounded like. Didn't care what I was playing. I go, well, I have other guitars. This is just the one I brought. She kept bringing me up, bringing it up in dinner after rehearsal. And I was like, I really do have a lot of other guitars. It's no problem. And my hair grows. And guess what? Your husband's bald. Yeah, at that time, Ozzy shaved his head. And also at that time, Joe Lynn Turner went around with a wig. Why couldn't they throw a wig on George Lynch? I don't know, man. Maybe the wigs weren't that perfected and Joe uh, Lynn Turner knew something we all didn't know. Well, George was referring to the fact that Ozzy Osbourne had recently cut all his hair off. Didn't help Lynch's case. But he's Ozzy and he can do whatever he wants, the guitar said. As they have these things called wigs and a lot of rockers wear them i'll wear one one of those how about that i never got the chance to get past that yeah you know i also think about there's also uh richie blackmore wore, wears a wig i'm talking about way back then during this era there's a lot more people wearing wigs now but the ones that were obvious was richie blackmore Jolyn Turner was an obvious, I swear. Maybe some of you saw it back then. But I always thought that guy had a full head of hair till like, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago is when I finally found out that's always been a wig. That is crazy. Anyway, despite George Lynch's suggested solutions, just didn't work out. About a month went by and we were traveling, rehearsing in Dallas for a while. Then we moved rehearsal to L.A. and then we were at SIR Studios one night and Wendy Dio, I guess, kept pressuring him to get one of her guys and Jakey Lee was one of her guys. So they had an audition that they didn't tell me about and I just showed up at SIR Studios thinking we're going to rehearse. And then the other guy walks on stage. Nobody ever told me. And Jakey Lee was up there, not really playing very well. Where later on, Jakey Lee told me he didn't play well that day. But he looked fantastic. And he had this full leather bodysuit. And his hair was down to his ass. He looked fantastic. 
and he moved great. The only thing remaining was for Lynch to be told what he already suspected. Ozzy walked back to the dressing room and said, Hey, it was hard to understand what he was saying, his accent. I couldn't really tell what he, he was saying, but I got the point that I was fired. Although Lynch enjoyed success throughout the 80s with Dawkins, he still admitted that was pretty rough because also at that time George Lynch had a wife and kids and and he had short hair because back then man I mean a lot of places wouldn't hire you with long hair and I believe he was uh, delivering liquor uh, that's what I believe he was doing now Jakey Lee later said and George Lynch confirmed that it's true that he was fired from Ozzy's band. Ozzy fired him right in front of Jakey Lee. And George Lynch said, yeah, they didn't pay me. They didn't give me any compensation. They didn't ask me if I was okay or anything. They just didn't care. They just said it was literally like, it took like a minute. Ozzy just said, hey, it's not going to be working out. You know, thanks a lot for your time. See you later. Bye. Yeah, my jaw dropped. I couldn't believe it. My heart just dropped. And yeah, I think I cried on the way home. It was very devastating. So, in the same year Bark at the Moon was released, George Lynch found success with Dokken, who had released their Breaking the Chains debut, and the band would go on to follow it up with consecutive platinum records. There you go, man. I'm just, right now, I was thinking, man, who are the big four? Are there a big four? I guess, yeah, well, I can think of three of the early 80s around this time. Really, two. T. Martini, uh, George Lynch, Jakey Lee, that's three. I would throw in Randy Rhodes, but uh, he just missed the boat. Randy Rhodes kind of died before, not kind of, he did die. <laughs> Uh, when, when Rat and Dokken and all that stuff. You can't throw, I mean, yeah, I, I love Mick Mars. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he falls into the big four of that early. Hey, you people watching, leave your comments below. Who would you consider the fourth one? Because that is the big four. Come on. Jakey Lee, Warren D. Martini, George Lynch. Man, Akiri Takasaki, but he wasn't really that well known, but shit, he's my favorite out of all of them. But, man, as far as who's my favorite of the big three, because I can't think of the big four at the moment, I'd have to go with George Lynch. But Warren D. Martini wrote the coolest riff with Lay It Down. And Jesus, what guitar player. And, you know, Jakey Lee, man. What he does on the song, Bark at the Moon and Waiting for Darkness. I mean, the guy's just phenomenal. But then I think about that guitar solo in the song, A Tooth and Nail, and I'm like, yeah, technically George Lynch is the best. And I gotta tell you, George Lynch alive, back in the day was flawless. But you know, after Lynch Mob and stuff, I've seen him several times. It's always hit and miss, man. There's some nights he just blows my mind. There's some nights he's just not that good. You know? Luckily, the last time I saw him, was he was fucking amazing. But, uh, yeah, I, I love George Lynch's guitar playing, you know? And just judging on what, what's been recorded between Doc and, you know, uh, Ozzy with Jake and Warren D. Martini with Rat, I I'd give it to Doc. I just, I mean, to, uh, yeah, to Dawkins, to George Lynch. I just think he's, he's the best of the big three. Man, I just can't think of the fourth guitarist, man, because I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of great guitars, but did they make the impact that Mark D. Martini, Lynch, and Jakey Lee did? I can't think of the fourth one. I'd be very, very surprised if there is one. Leave in the comments below if you think so. As far as what Ozzy did to George Lynch, that's messed up, man. You know? Uh, I love Ozzy to death, but he's a prick. I mean, well, yeah, I met him twice, and he was nice, but I'm just saying. What kind of what kind of behavior is that? And then also, Ozzy, 
punch Rudy Sarzo in the face in the lobby of a hotel. Rudy Sarzo, the nicest guy ever. Ain't like no fake nice guy like David Grohl. That guy is genuinely nice. Rudy Sarzo is a class act. And I've met him many, many times. And Ozzy punches him in the face. Then there's the story of Don Costa, short-lived bass player in Ozzy's band. That Jake Lee told a story where he saw Don go into the tour bus and then walk out with a bloody nose. Then he walked out and his nose was bloody and, and Jake's like, what happened? He's like, I don't know, man. Ozzy just headbutted me. Headbutted him right in the nose and broke his nose. Then, you know, Jake went in the bus and Ozzy said, he came on to me. Like he was trying to hit on him or something. And then the, the Us Festival happens and Jake leaves there and he sees Donna Costa, but he sees, first he sees Bob Daisley. He's like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm playing. Like, he's playing. That was the first time him and Bob Daisley shared a stage together. But Don Costa uh, showed up. And with his family and everything, thinking that he's going to play. Only to get fired at a show where he took his family to. I mean, they didn't even warn him beforehand. Don't show up at the festival or nothing. That's a messed up shit. Love Ozzy, but he's a prick. What do you all think? Leave it in the comments below. Who is number four of the big four? I can only think of three. Leave it in the comments below. And I'm talking metal guitar players. Don't throw out stuff like Stevie Ray Vaughan and shit like that, you know? George Lynch, D. Martini, Jake Lee, that style. Who's number four? And I'm not, and don't mention Gary Moore or none of these people that were out before. The ones that hit the spotlight around 1984. Leave it in the comments below. And please, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And ring that little notification bell. I would totally appreciate that. And like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>